I will present a joint work with Thorben Hansen, Tariq Cassette, and Carlos Padro on optimal, non-perfect, uh, uniform secret-sharing schemes. So uh, first I will give an introduction to secret-sharing, and then I will present our results. That is a new framework for the study of non-perfect schemes, bounds and constructions, and results on optimal, uniform, non-perfect secret-sharing schemes. So secret-sharing scheme is a method to protect a secret, and it works as follows. So given a secret, a secret-sharing scheme generates some pieces of information that we call shares, from which the secret can be recovered. So for every subset A, we say that uh, if the secret can be recovered from the shares within this S in A, we say that A is authorized. While if uh, this share does not provide any information about the secret, we say that A is forbidden. A scheme is said to be perfect if uh, all subsets are forbidden or are authorized. And we define the access structure as the family of authorized subsets. In this work, all the schemes are unconditionally secure, so the security does not rely on any computational assumption. So secret sharing schemes were introduced by Shamir and Blackley in 1979, and the original motivation was to safeguard keys, but soon appeared to be a very important cryptographic primitive, and now they have applications in many areas, as multiparty computation, attribute-based encryption, threshold cryptography, oblivious transfer, and for using schemes in these applications, we need of efficient schemes. And in particular, in many of these applications, we need the schemes with homomorphic properties. So in this work, we study the efficiency of the schemes and we look for linear schemes with uh, small shares. So but what do we know about the size of the shares? So we know that in a perfect secret sharing scheme, the size of each share must be greater or equal than the size of the secret. And we know also that for certain access structures, it's possible to construct linear schemes in which the size of each share is the size of the secret, for instance, the threshold case. But in general, it will not be satisfied. So by the methods we know, if we construct a secret sharing scheme, the size of the share will be, in general, much bigger than the size of the secret. So in order to find more efficient schemes, we studied non-perfect schemes. In these schemes, some subsets uh, are not forbidden nor authorized and may have partial information about the secret. These schemes were introduced by Blackley and Meadows. And in these schemes, or at least Blackley and Meadows showed that in these schemes, size of the shares can be smaller than the size of the secret in certain situations. And now I will present the scheme by Blackley and Meadows that was based on the scheme by Shamir. So in the Shamir secret sharing scheme, the secret is an element from a finite field. And in order to share the secret, a polynomial is chosen at random, a polynomial of degree t minus one uh, with coefficients in the field, satisfying the, that the evaluation of the polynomial at y is the secret. So in the original paper, y was zero. And then the shares are just evaluations of the polynomial and subset A is authorized if the size of A is greater or equal than T and is forbidden if the size of the subset is more or equal than T minus one. In this case, both uh, the, the shares and the secret are elements from the finite field and so the size of the secret equals the size of the shares. The scheme uh, by Blackley and Meadows works as follows. Now the secret is a vector of elements from the finite field, let's say G elements. And again, in, in order to share the secret, a polynomial is chosen at random, but satisfying that the evaluations at different points are the coordinates of the vector. Again, the shares are evaluations of the polynomial, and those subsets of size greater or equal than T are authorized. But now, the subsets of size uh, the, of uh, size uh, smaller or equal than t minus g are for I, those that are forbidden. And so the subsets of size between t minus g and t have partial information about the secret. So we have like two thresholds. So we have the reconstruction threshold and a privacy threshold, t and t minus g. 
and we lose the perfectness of the scheme, but the size of each share um, is the size of the secret divided by G. In a non-perfect scheme, we, uh, the gap of the scheme is the minimum distance between authorized and forbidden subsets, and in this scheme, the gap is G. So in this threshold case, uh, Blackley and Meadows presented this scheme that was called Trump scheme, and is optimal. And this scheme had applications in secure multiparty computations and many other areas. But for the general case, if we cannot describe the structure of the scheme by means of these two thresholds, uh, we have other open problems. So there were uh, several results uh, trying to extend the notion of ideality to the non-perfect case, and also trying to extend the connections with matroids. Results on the bounds of the size of the share. Uh, so Gata et al. showed that the size of each share divided by the size of the secret must be greater or equal than one over the gap. That's why the scheme by Blackley and Meadows is optimal. And there are also works on the um, search of efficient schemes for uh, non-perfect uh, secret sharing schemes. So. Oh, yeah. So we saw that the techniques uh, for a non-perfect case and for the general non-perfect case are far less developed than the ones for a perfect case because we lack of an appropriate framework to study this problem and we lack, of, uh, we lack an appropriate framework to extend the techniques for perfect schemes to non-perfect schemes to describe precisely their structure and to construct useful linear schemes. So in this work we pre present a new framework um, this framework um, is based on information theory, so the definition we consider of secret sharing is, in, from informa is information theoretic, and we model the shares as uh, discrete random variables. So for us, a secret sharing scheme on a set P that we call the set of participants is a collection of discrete random variables. Um, the first random variable is the one by, that describes the secret, and the ones the other ones describe the, the, other, the shares of the participants, such that the entropy of the secret is bigger than zero. Here the entropy is the Shannon entropy. And the mutual information between the secret and the shares um, is the entropy of the secret, which means that the participants can recover the secret. We say that the subset A is authorized if the mutual information between the secret and the shares of A is the entropy of the secret, which means that A can recover the secret, and a subset is forbidden if the mutual information is zero. But the description of the family of authorized subsets and the family of forbidden subsets sometimes is not enough, and so we need a more accurate description of the, of the structure of the scheme, measuring the information known about the secret. So we, define, we describe the structure of the schemes by means of the uh, uh, access function. So an access function on a set P is just a monotony increasing function pro from the power set of P to the close interval between zero and one. And for every secret sharing scheme, we can define an access function. And this access function is, is defined in the following way. Oh, um, so, um, Phi of uh, subset A is the mutual information between the secret and the shares of A. And is divided by the entropy of the secret to normalize the function. So this function measures the, informa the information known about the secret for, us, for every subset. Um, it's easy to see that phi of uh, P is, is one and phi of the empty set is zero. And if a scheme is perfect, then this function phi only takes values zero and one, and so it's, it's Boolean. And there were similar ideas in the works by Kurosawa et al. and Ishai Kusilevich and Strulovic, and, but we generalize their ideas. So we saw that every secretary scheme defined an access function, but which access, which access functions admit secretary schemes? So we showed that there exists a secret sharing scheme for every access function. Our proof is constructive, 
And for every subset A, we construct a scheme that shares uh, phi of A fraction of the secret. And this is a similar idea that was in the works of Ito et al. and Ishai et al. And it extends the result of Ito Saito and Ishiseki to a non-perfect case. And we give, an, uh, for every rational access function, that is a, a function that only takes rational values, we, we provide a linear Sekishanian scheme, but we need non-linear Sekishanian schemes for non-rational access functions. But as in the result of Ito Saito and Nishizeki, the shares of these uh, schemes that we construct uh, are not efficient, so the size of the shares are also exponential to the number of participants. So we want efficient schemes, so we ask which access functions admit uh, short shares. In order to study this problem, we use this new framework to extend the techniques for the study of perfect schemes to the non-perfect case, and we obtain bounds on the size of the shares and also techniques to construct the schemes. In order to measure the size of the shares, we use the information ratio. The information ratio of a scheme measures the size of the largest share divided by the size of the secret. And we approximate the length of the shares and the length of the secret by the Shannon entropy. Moreover, for every access function, we define the optimal information ratio as the infimum of the information ratio of the schemes for the access functions. So for, in, for perfect schemes, we have many uh, results, uh, for, and we have general lower bounds uh, that use the Shannon inequalities and polymatroids, and also uh, results that use non-Shannon inequalities and also results for uh, linear Sekishanian schemes. But for the non-perfect Sekishanian schemes, we only, only have this general lower bound, that is that the optimal information ratio is greater or equal than one over the gap. So we, we propose a new lower bound uh, on the optimal information ratio that, that we call epsilon, and it is based on the Shannon inequalities. And we use polymatroids, and we show that this lower bound is tied for certain families of access functions. It improves the previous general lower bound, and it has interesting combinatorial properties with respect to operations like the dual and minors. Moreover, we also present uh, ways to construct the schemes. So, um, in order to construct, so we concatenate linear Sekishanian schemes in order to construct linear schemes for convex combinations of the access functions. That is, given some uh, schemes sigma one, sigma m, linear Sekishanian schemes with access functions phi one, phi m, and given uh, psi, that is a uh, um, a convex combination of, of the access functions, we can construct a secret sharing scheme for psi, for which the information radius is more or equal than the, uh, the convex combination of the information radius. So we have general techniques for the study of uh, non-perfect secret sharing schemes. So we have lower bounds and constructions, and we apply them to a family of non-perfect uh, schemes that is the family of uniform non-perfect sharing schemes. We say that an access function is uniform if its values uh, depend only on the size of the subset. This is the case, for instance, of threshold schemes and ramp schemes. And so since this function just depends on the size of the subset, we can represent it as just as a function that depends on the cardinality of the subsets. For instance, this is the access function of a scheme, a threshold scheme of threshold five. And this is a ramp scheme with a threshold five and gap two. But there are many other uh, uniform access functions that can, um, have not been studied. For instance, in this case, we, con we consider uh, the case in which uh, subsets of size two can obtain some information about the secret but uh, the secret is not recovered until the subsets have a size five and many other functions. And so we studied the optimal information ratio of, of uniform access functions. And so we computed the bound we had, epsilon, for these functions. And it appeared to be a very simple. 
because uh, the expression of epsilon just depends on second order differences of the function. And in this way, we could compute epsilon of all uniform access functions. But then we asked if there are schemes that attain this lower bound. So, and if the access function is uniform and rational, we constructed a linear scheme that attains this bound. So this uh, question, so the, the answer is yes for uniform rational access functions. And the way we did is uh, the following. So once we have um, a, rash, a rational uniform access function, we look for an optimal decomposition of the access function as a convex combination of access functions of ramp schemes. There are many possible decompositions, but we look for the optimal one. And once we have this decomposition, we realize this access function with the ramp scheme, this access function with the ramp scheme, and then we combine the ramp schemes using the general technique present I presented before. In this way, we can construct a scheme for uh, the original uh, access function. Uh, surprisingly, it was enough to, const to use ramp schemes to construct optimal schemes for every rational uniform access function. And for non-rational uniform access functions, we also construct um, sequences of schemes with information ratio that tends to epsilon. And the main result of this work is this theorem. For every uniform access function, the optimal information ratio is epsilon. And moreover, if the access function is rational, then it admits an optimal secretion scheme that is linear. This result has several corollaries, and one of those is that the Shannon inequalities are enough for computing the optimal information ratio in the case of uniform access functions. And this was something uh, already observed by Chen and Yang. So in this work, we present a new framework for the study of uh, non-perfect secretion schemes. We present newer lower bounds on the information ratio, and we present uh, optimal secretion schemes, and we compute optimal information ratio for uniform access functions. The future directions after uh, this work are the optimization of uh, schemes for other families of access functions, to study the restrictions on the size of the secret for these constructions, and to find new general lower bounds on the size of the share. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>